there's both an innate biological experience that we have of our feeling state that is intrinsically enjoyable and not enjoyable. Some feelings, we really like the way they feel and we want more of them. And some feelings, we intrinsically do not like how they feel and we want less of them. So there is a approach avoidance dynamic built into your biology that is designed to help us move away from things that don't work for us and move towards things that do work for us. So that piece is neutral. That piece, we're never going to like undo that. So that's sort of the, the ground of being. You will notice that, you know, there are things you enjoy, you know, when you're feeling happy and good and you like that. And then you know when you're feeling sad or hurt or in pain or frustrated or angry, and you tend not to like that, <laughs> generally speaking, okay? But that's going to be different as well for different people. But just know that that's neutral. That's part of your internal guidance system. Then we have domination conditioning. And it's the domination conditioning that takes the sort of neutral experiences of contrasting experiences of pain and pleasure in our lives and adds a layer of oppression and moralism and um, war. I'm just going to call it, call it like war and violence about these internal things by giving you a certain, giving most people one, an inequitable economic structure and um, societal structure coupled with the cultural valuing and approval of some things and the cultural oppression and disapproval of other things. And that adds a layer that many of us are working to detox. So for example, let me give you just one example of how that works in domination culture. When we, I'm going to be speaking now very stereotypically and in very broad strokes, just to show a huge pattern and of course, there are many exceptions, and hopefully we are all changing this. Okay, so those are my little caveats before I say things that can be potentially triggering for people. Generally speaking, if a man gets angry in our culture, we see him as strong and powerful and assertive and like a good leader. And if a woman gets angry, we see her as bitchy and unhinged and having a mental health disorder. So the experience and expression of emotion in a domination culture is not equal for all people. And so what we end up internalizing if we've grown up in a domination culture, depending upon your sense of identity and whatever kind of culture you grew up in, it can be the nuances, the specifics of this can be different from family to family and place to place. I'm just gonna point to the, the pattern of, you will have been taught that some feelings you're allowed to feel and you're supposed to feel. And some feelings you are not allowed to feel and you are not supposed to feel. And then what happens is that we end up with this internalized oppression and this internalized judgment of our feeling states. And that's a different problem than this other thing you're talking about, which is, yeah, there are some feelings I really do want more of and there are other feelings I don't want to experience as much. That is guidance. That's internal GPS. The part of me that's like, oh, it's really bad to be angry. I can't cry. I'm going to get smacked. I, um, the only way that I can ever get hurt is by amplifying anger. That is sort of the dysfunctional side effect of living in a domination culture and the way in which it uses human emotion to inhibit and um, glorify behaviors that serve that kind of system. And it doesn't go equally for all people. Yeah. 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 So depending upon the, specifics of each of our own experiences and where we've grown up and what was normative in our family of origin, which was embedded in another culture, right? So it's it's going to be different. We will all likely have some feelings that we can't tolerate feeling and that we stay in denial of and other feelings that we're almost addicted to and they're our go-to feelings and bringing ourselves back into health and well-being and into relationship is this path of um, learning how to feel and make peace with everything that is arising 
without acting it out and using it to coerce, bully, insist, force, manipulate others, or on the other end, inhibiting it and self-silencing and withdrawing and shutting down so that I and other people don't have access to what is alive in me. But like we have this, like, what is wrong when we have a feeling like what is wrong? The thing we we're asking instead in this practice is what does this feeling tell me about my needs? Because the reason we have feelings is to give us information about the state of our needs. And so the, the new wiring that we want to really get good at connecting is, oh, I'm feeling sad. I have a need for mourning. I have a need for processing. I have a need for compassionate presence. When I can connect with what that feeling is telling me I need, then I can align my strategies to that need. And I can serve my well-being and other people's well-being instead of getting hooked into this um, anxiety place of what's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? How do I fix me? How do I fix you? That's what we're trying to get out of. And so one is getting um, a much more peaceful, awake, relational relationship with our feelings, which essentially means feeling them and then understanding that they give us data about the intrinsic motivators that help us both survive and thrive. That's why we have feelings. And so when we start shifting the way we work with them through that lens, everything changes.